This is the Tribal Data Toolbox Exercise 12, Final Data Invalidation. So, like these people, you have things that you have to sort. What you've got is data. Uh, one of the key things to remember when invalidating data is that you never want to write over the actual data point. So, in effect, what we're going to be doing is going to be sorting data. We've got rows of data that we know are good. We've got rows of data that we know have been flagged, but we decide after looking at our logbooks, looking perhaps at other parameters, the weather, that even though we flag the data, they're perhaps high, so we flag them just so that we could find them more easily after, they're still going to be good. And then we've got data that we're going to invalidate. We're not going to delete or remove or write over that data, but they will be flagged with an invalidation code that will show up in a file, but when you generate charts or graphs, or when you generate your file for uploading to AQS, these data will have an invalidation code, and that's useful in that it shows EPA, or whoever is reviewing your data, that you were indeed monitoring, and if you assign a code that's meaningful in terms of machine malfunction, high winds, etc., then you have a sense of what happened and why the data are invalid. So first, let's look at the exercise. So, and it says, following the SOP, and we know we can find the SOP by going into the toolbox. And we know this exercise is going to be the final data invalidation. So we've done the logbook and external information such as audit reports data flagging in the last exercise. Now we're going to do final data validation. So we're going to click on this button. We say, whoa, what is going on? So remember, click here for help file, and that pulls up the SOP for final data review and invalidation and it goes through what we're going to be doing and points out what these four blocks or excuse me three blocks in this form represent and how to use them. So going back into the toolbox what we're going to do now is when we have imported the data some of the data are flagged at that point that's the first step of data review then the intermediate phase of data review is when you clicked on this button and you had some information, say from a log book or something like that, an audit report or your own memory perhaps, and you wanted to flag data. That's the intermediate phase. Now we are at the final phase of data review where we're going to decide, is this data useful? Does it conform to all the QC requirements? or do I need to invalidate it and not include it in my averages, in my charts, etc. So we're going to click this. Now one thing to notice right off the bat is that we only have three blocks here and that's because we're going to invalidate filter data and that applies to both the data from the analyzer and the data from the lab. So we only have one block here for filter methods. And what this screen does is it walks us through the invalidation process and that is what we're going to be reviewing now. So we've got um, ozone data, right? So we need to decide before we generate a report to AQS or before we make a chart or a report to our supervisor, we're going to decide what data are in here that are good. And if they're not good, why aren't they good? So we know we've got ozone data, right? So, um, and following the exercise description, it says you will decide whether or not to invalidate the already flagged data. And this is where the fact that you've already flagged the data is useful to you because instead of just scrolling through page after page, line after line of data, you can easily find the data you've already flagged. So we know we've got continuous monitoring ozone data at site one and sampler ID. Remember all our data is from instrument one. If you select instrument four, that was the ozone analyzer we borrowed. Um, the toolbox knows it was an ozone analyzer, but there's no sampling year in the drop-down box because we actually didn't gather any data with instrument four. So we're gonna be looking at instrument one and that's an ozone analyzer. 
and the only year that we've got data for is 2006. And once you select that, the toolbox automatically po populates this date time range with the existing data. So we know that for 2006, uh, we don't have any data before the 8th of August or after the 22nd of August. So there are three ways that you can invalidate the data and it just depends mostly on how much data you have to look at. So one way is to view all the data and manually add flags to invalidate. So let's click this. And you can see that it's hard to review data in this format. Um, what was that date and you know what, what am I looking for? Especially if you've got lots and lots of data. Now we know we only have 336 rows. This isn't that much ozone data. And you can see if you scroll down and you don't scroll down too fast, you can see the qualifiers here. When we imported the data, remember these were machine malfunction codes, negative 6999. And we flagged that as an out of range check in our first phase of data review when we originally imported the data. And you can assign an invalidation code this way by clicking in this invalidation code column and then the drop down box gives you a choice of these different invalidation codes. So for these two rows, these two hours of ozone data, clearly something was going wrong with the machine. So I think the most sensible invalidation code is machine malfunction. It is not critical that you select a particular invalidation code. Sometimes more than one of these is going to apply, so you have to use your best judgment. Machine malfunction, and then this is for the same reason, machine malfunction. And then when we exit, and then let's just go back in, view all data, and let's see if those codes are still there. They are. So we have added a machine malfunction invalidation code, which is good because if, you, if, we, inc if we included this, for example, in a report and included these to calculate the average, of course it would be very, very skewed. And in a chart, the chart would look terrible because this would go down to a negative value and probably just bottom out on the chart at zero and have all the other data be squished totally together. So you can see that it's important when generating your final reports and files to go through and invalidate these. Until you add these invalidation codes, even flagged data will show up in your reports and charts and your AQS files. So that's one way of doing it. And the uh, good thing about clicking this button is that, for example, and we'll look at this um, with some other data in a minute, but if you click this, you can look at what data are around. So for example, if you had a value that maybe was weird, not this one, but you could see that the, for the hours before and the hours after, it was ramping up or ramping down to that value. You may decide that this is a valid data point, not these particular ones, but that's the advantage of clicking this button, is that you can see the data in the hours around your already flagged data. The next way to do it is view only qualified data, and if you click that, it shows just the data that you flagged. And now look what we see. We didn't scroll down far enough um, because we've, all, we've got other data that's flagged too. And so that's what's nice about clicking this button is it will pull up all the data that you flagged for whatever reason, even if as you're scrolling through this way, you miss it, which we did because it's all, right, all at the bottom. So let's use this method. So we're going to view only qualified data and at this point, we could either click down one of these uh, and select one of these invalidation codes also, or we could select an invalidation code. And this is useful if you've got data that's already flagged, but it's all over the place. It's not in a chunk. Um, so we could select, um, in this case, the data that we want to flag are these cues. And this is, remember when um, the shelter door blew open in the night. 
from nine o'clock at night until seven o'clock in the morning when we got there. And we can see that the, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the data, but we know the shelter door was open and therefore the shelter temperature it probably was way cold. Um, so we're going to go ahead and assign an invalidation code to this set of data using this button. And this time we're going to select bad weather. Um, the weather was so bad, the winds were so high that they blew our shelter and shaked and rattled it till the window, till the door came open. So now we're going to apply this inval invalidation code to those Q2 values that we already flagged and that don't already have the invalidation code that we assigned for those negative 6999 values. So I'm going to click this button and it's going to say this excludes the data from AQS. So yes. We run an update query, 11 rows, yes. And now let's go back and look at the qualified data. And you could see that it left our invalidation code of um, machine malfunction there that we assigned manually. And then it added this AO flag, which is the AQS flag for bad weather. So if you want to know what the different flags mean, we have in the SOP, if you scroll to the very end of the SOP, we have a list and these in large part are similar to AQS flags. Um, and you can see that we've got all sorts of things, some applying to MET data. So this is the very last page of this SOP that you should have open during this exercise. So now we have invalidated all the data that we think should be invalid for the ozone data. Now let's look at the MET data. And um, I don't remember what data we flagged, but that's what's nice about this screen is that it will pull up all the data that we flagged and we've got our database logbook. So we know um, what reason we gave when we assigned that flag. Now we're gonna determine if it's really invalid. So for MET, um, it's a little bit more complicated because you have to select the particular parameter. So we know that we flag data, um, temperature data and wind speed data from our logbook. So we click the parameter ambient temperature first. And again, this box automatically populates with the first and last date time records for this particular parameter for this year for this sampler. And we could first click this button, view all data and manually add flags to invalidate. And again, you could see, wow, this is a lot of data. And okay, here's some, but it's just hard to make sure that you've caught every flagged row, um, especially as will be the case when you've got even more data than that. So let's view only qualified data and that pulls up these four rows where we have a problem with the ambient temperature because that's what we're looking at right now. And we can see clearly this is wrong and it is probably something wrong with the instrument, right? So we have again a choice of selecting instrument malfunction, I would, in this list. Or let's say we've got row, one row here, one row there, one row all over the place. Let's make life easy on ourselves. So we know that all of those are machine malfunction. So I'm going to click there. And now I'm going to click this button and validate only qualified data in the selected range. Okay, yes, yes, four rows, yes. And now let's look at this data again, and you can see that it assigned the invalidation code. So that's good for temperature, but wait, there's more because remember we invalidated wind speed also. So making sure not to forget about that because I think those values we definitely don't want in our reports. So I'm gonna select wind speed there and I'm going to view only qualified data. And again, it's the same four rows, but we have to go parameter by parameter because obviously the different parameters are reported separately to AQS. So, and we definitely don't want these negative 999 
meters per second wind speed messing up our calculations or our charts. So I am going to select the invalidation code AN there and then invalidate these four rows. Yes, yes. And now I'm going to view the qualified data again and you can see where we had the qualifiers and it, you can have multiple qualifiers. Those are the flags that we assigned in the uh, initial and the intermediate data review phase. You can have multiple qualifiers or flags here, but in terms of the invalidation code, you can only have one. AQS wants you to pick one reason, the most important reason why this data are invalid. So good, so now we've done the invalidation for the MET data. Now for PM 2.5, this is a little bit more complicated only because remember we've got the co-located samplers. So what we do here is we've got the site 2 and remember we've got two samplers, the primary instrument 2 and the co-located instrument 3. So let's look at the data from instrument 2 first. It's PM 2.5 filter based. 2006 and again it automatically populates these rows uh, excuse me the date time with the first date time and the end date time and you can see this is only for the month of August we've got data for and we could click view all data and you know for PM 2.5 it's not that much data um, so you could click all data and for the month of August we only have these six rows and do we have, aha, so we had this, if you remember, we had one of the days, it only ran for 20 hours. And that caused a problem because it didn't run long enough. And that also caused a problem in that we've got a qualifier based upon the agreement between the co-located because one of them ran for 24 hours and the other ran for 20. So the one that ran for 20 is probably going to have a lot less or proportionally less particulate matter on it than the one that ran for the full 24 hour period. So we've already got these qualifiers noting that this was the out of the allowable range of the difference between the two co-located. So I'm going to click the lower X and I'm going to just make sure I'm doing this right. I'm going to view only the qualified data and now I see, okay, so we've got three rows that have flags on them. And what are these flags? Well, looking at the last page of the data um, final SOP for data review and invalidation. Um, the code, the flag AX is out of range, relative percent difference between the routine and the co-located filters. So that's what the AX code means. So looking back here, um, that's why that code is there. Now, not necessarily would we have to invalidate this, however, we must because it only ran for 20 hours. So I am going to, since we've got such little data here, I am going to click this drop down box and I'm going to select the most logical invalidation code, which in this case is pretty straightforward sample time out of limits. Now, when you're doing this exercise, you may not see these two show up here. I, uh, when we did the intermediate data review, I flagged these because I was looking at, if you remember in that exercise, I was flagging any values greater than 10, just because I wanted to make sure to find them later if I wanted to find any values that were higher than what I was seeing, which was basically fairly low levels. But these are fine. There's nothing else wrong with these, so I'm just going to leave these as they are and only invalidate this one row for instrument two. Now, do I have to invalidate the corresponding day when instrument three ran? Let's look at instrument three. 
and then you have to select the drop down boxes 2006 and let's look at instrument 3 and see what's going on there well we have the flag that was assigned when we went through and looked at the agreement between the uh, routine and the co-located samplers and then this these R and R were flagged because they're greater than 10 but I've decided that these data are fine and you may not have these two R flagged rows the lab qualifier AX we assigned because of the disagreement between the co-located and the routine but even if the routine sampler was that data was invalidated we can use the co-located if it's all fine well it ran for 24 hours it doesn't have any other flags on it meaning that we went through and you know looked at the the times between picking up it from the field and getting it weighed in the laboratory etc etc all that passed the criteria so we are not going to invalidate this same for the same day for the uh, co-located instrument 3. We are not going to invalidate that and that's good because that will help us in our completeness. Um, so even though if one of your co-located is invalid, if the same problem didn't happen to the other sampler, then that data is valid and can be reported to AQS. So we are going to leave this alone because we know that the problem was with the timer on instrument 2 and this is instrument 3. So we are going to leave all this data as good for instrument 3. So that is the end of exercise 12 and now you've got your data um, that you've decided is good. You've invalidated data that has wild negative values that are going to mess up your reports and charts and we are finished with exercise 12 except for making sure that you make a backup copy and that you uh, transmit a copy of the toolbox that you just completed to your instructor.